Fernando has this thing he does when he loves to counter people. He likes to catch people coming yes. in with his hands. And all Journey did was throw kicks. <laughs> That's all he did. He threw leg kicks, body kicks, push kicks, and just stay on the outside and avoid the power. Because, I mean, obviously, Fernando don't have a bunch of knockouts, but he got some kind of power because he knocked out Joshua. Wing. That's how he got the, yeah. the contract in the first yeah. place. Yeah, so, I mean, obviously, Journey was aware of that. That's why he fought the way he did. Let's go. Yeah. I'm like an addict, do I gotta have it? I ain't even playing, gotta re Ultimate Fighter finalist, Brady Highstand. I don't know why his name is Bam Bam, because you know he wanna wrestle. And then we got Fernie Garcia. I was looking at his fights, man, and he get a lot of support from his city. When he got signed to the UFC, it was on the news. When they announced this one, it was on the news. I'm like, I have never seen that before. Pretty good fighter. I mean, he did lose that last one to, to Journey. Fernie Garcia has a lot of potential, man, but it seemed like he holding back sometimes. Do you kind of get that feeling? He kind of reminds me of like a, a lesser version of Christian Rodriguez, or is it Clayson Rodriguez? Which is Clayson the kicker. Oh, which, one, which one is the smooth Christian? Dude. And it's funny because they have a common opponent in Joshua Weems. Did you know that they fought, he fought Joshua too? Yeah. On the contender, this is who Joshua Weems got beat by, Fernie Garcia. Remember he threw the overhand right, then he was grinding, pounding him? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah, then, yeah. The, okay, the thing is with Fernando, after he beat Joshua Weems, you would've thought he had a bunch of knockouts. I go and look on his record, he only got one knockout. Wait, are you serious? Look, look at his record, he only got one knockout in his whole career. That's odd because his hands look so good on the oh, contender. Yeah. Like, no, his hands look good in general, but he's not really known for his knockout power. Mm, that's going to be a little bit problematic because that means that Brady ain't going to have that much to worry about. And let me tell you, Brady, yeah. I, I don't care if he says he's working on everything and he's well-rounded. He's going to be wrestling. He's going to do just enough striking to start wrestling. For the record, he should be the ultimate fighter. Outside of him getting dropped in that third round, I mean, he was already up two rounds and it ain't like Ricky won a 10 8 round. So I just, I didn't understand that. But he's only 23. And the thing is with Brady, his striking, there's so many questions about his striking, but we never see it because he's always on the inside. You know how Daniel Cormier, oh, he, oh man. Who was it? Who was it? That's Brady. He lost to Chad. Oh, yeah. In that third round. Yeah, that was the third round. Yeah, but, um, Okay, he lost to Chad, man. Chad TKO Brady, but do Fernando got the power that Chad has? And that's funny because he he TKO him. He only twenty three, so he probably was nineteen when he got beat in twenty nineteen. So he was super young, probably nineteen or or twenty. I'm gonna tell you one thing: when Fernando fought against Journey, Fernando has this thing he does when he loves to counter people. He likes to catch people coming yes. in with his hands. And all Journey did was throw kicks. <laughs> that's all he did. He threw leg kicks, body kicks, push kicks and just stay on the outside and avoid the power. Because, I mean, obviously, Fernando don't have a bunch of knockouts, but he got some kind of power because he knocked out Joshua. Wing. That's how he got the, yeah. the contract in the first yeah. place. Yeah, so I mean, obviously, Josh, I'm not, obviously, Journey was aware of that. That's why he fought the way he did, because he really didn't take, like, he but, fought smart. But Brady has to do something to close the distance because Brady cannot beat him at range like that. Brady got to strike with him enough to grapple. The question is, can Brady get on the inside without getting hurt? And can he use his wrestling to beat Fernie? Because I don't think he can hold Fernie. Down. I don't know, man. Yeah, he can change with Michael Chiesa, and he might be able to. Yeah, all the, all the decisions Brady got, man, he definitely can hold some down. And Fernando, he can kind of be controlled. Doesn't make sense. Yeah. Like, he, I don't know if he overthinks, man, but, like, sometimes he don't let his hands fly. That's what I said when I started off the video. Like, mm -hmm. it seemed like he's holding back. Like, something is there is preventing him from just really fighting all the way. It's almost like he's trying to fight pretty. He wants this nice, smooth, highlight reel, counter knockout. Bro, people are not about to give you that. In the UFC, this man finna fight dirty, gritty, nasty. He know how he lost the Ultimate Fighter on some BS. He know he yeah. need to get a W. And he know the way to get it is to go to his bread and butter wrestling. You are not about to catch him coming in. He got dropped by Ricky and still, well, he survived. Now, one thing I will say is, Brady seemed to get tired. But Ricky, Ooh, but Ricky, in the third round too. but Ricky move around a lot though. So that's kind of different. Cause if Ricky ain't got nothing else, he can avoid big shots and he can make you use a lot of energy. Yeah, but uh, Chad and the Hilliger finish him in the third round. Oh. And he starts slowing down in the third round against Chad. That's why he got finished. So it's like, yeah. I was looking at that, bro. And I, it's tough, man, because the thing is, maybe that one knockout win that Fernando has over Josh, because Josh, let's be real, he's going for his jiu-jitsu. Yeah. You're not talking about a jiu-jitsu guy who's, his striking is improving. Yeah. So is he, is his knockout power overrated, you know, and is he going to be able to land it? Because let's be real, his, his back going to be against Cage. No, his back going to be on on the canvas, for sure. He only got one decision win. Yeah. 
you know, too, all together. But dude, for Brady, his hands are not dangerous enough. Like he's missing something. I know and and he missing the middle between those. He missing that something, but he he missing the hands. And his hands ain't bad. Like his hands would look decent against Ricky. You know what kills it? He got dropped by Ricky Tercios. That's gonna follow him for a long time. He got another uh, knockout loss as an amateur, which I know that was a long time ago, 2017. But sometimes, man, like, is the chin there? No, nah, the chin is there, man, because he got beat. And look at all the fights he won after that. And then he only got beat by Chad and Helliger, other than the ultimate fighter. But Chad, I know he went hard. He, he, he kind of going crazy right now. Yeah. He's so, so, but I, ultimately, man, I'm going to, I'm gonna have to pick. I don't know, man. Sometimes we pick these guys who's supposed to win the Ultimate Fighter, like Trey Sean Gore, and sometimes it takes them a minute to get their foot in, man. Because losing the Ultimate Fighter is like losing the championship. It's like something about losing, like you know how Dominic Reyes and John, yeah. something about losing it when you almost had it and people thought you won. It just sets off this bad momentum of of you losing. But I would think that Brady should be able to get the job done with the wrestling. Only because Fernando don't have as many knockouts as we think he did. And also because Fernando seemed to be a little bit too lackadaisical and too tentative in his fights. Like he wants the perfect scenario, yeah. you know, and I just don't think Brady will give that to him now. Brady can't get tired. I, I will say that. So ultimately, I'm going to pick Brady in that wrestling and I hopefully he can put it together. But I wouldn't sleep on Fernando. Oh, like man, he got three. Fernando got three submission wins. One Wait a knockout. minute. Whoa, he got three submission wins. Yeah, but I'm saying that's not... I'm saying... I, don't, Whoa, when, when I think those? it would take more than that to beat Brady. That's what I'm saying. Let me see. What, this dude was 1-5. and five, He submitted 6-10, and 12-30. No, Bro, come man, on. No. But that's a lot of experience, though. But 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 the, all the people who got records similar to, to Brady, he beat, he beat them down. Nah, I don't know who to pick. I'm not picking. I'm looking at the uh, stats, man. They say Fernando, he only land 2.85 significant strikes per minute. Per minute? And uh, Brady land 4.40. He's a wrestler. Yeah, I'm going back to Brady. But then again, I don't have confidence in his uh, cardio. Hey, he's going to be up two rounds regardless. And you got to think about it. Fernando ain't going to be making him use a bunch of cardio because he's going to be waiting on Brady to do something. I know. He and so be. it ain't like he's going to be moving around like Ricky and you got to catch him the whole time and he just nonstop. Like, Fernando going to be sitting back waiting on that and Brady going to win, man. I'm picking Brady. So who you pick? Let me one. Let me see. I don't need one of them have a win in the UFC. Yeah, a significant. Win. I'm going with Fernando. I'm going because he got at least he won. But that was Joshua Joshua Wing. I'm going with Brady. <laughs>